Greg Vogt, CEO of Nisner Tourism. We're sitting here at Blackwater's Lodge with their almost magnificent gardens and, 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 and mashy course. And uh, we're here for the Mr. Gay World Sports Day 2015. How did Nisner's Pink Journey start? How did it get to Blackwater's Lodge today? Well, it's an interesting one. Um, first of all, Mr. Gay World chose Nisner as a destination to celebrate Mr. Gay World, uh, which I think is massive. It's a massive, massive feather in pink feather in Nisner's cap. Indeed. Our journey to get to our pink journey starting here began some time ago and if you recall at WTM uh, you introduced me to you to Jason Fiddler and we had a conversation where I challenged Jason on on a number of aspects saying how do we reach the pink market and what are the messages and he was so informative I mean it was the most amazing experience interacting with him and he basically uh, started the conversation by saying it's a market it's a segment of a niche a segment of, of the tourism market and it's a niche and you have to go for it um, if you want that pink dollar to be spent in your economy you have to be receptive to it you have to understand its nuances you have to go and tell them that you're available and what better time than during the Mr. Gay world when you've got 25 or 23 delegates here reaching out to their fan base saying we're at this place that is the pink town of Africa and we started a, a very 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 dynamic conversation with our ad agency with our PR companies with the likes with tourism commentators like yourself and we arrived at the at the point of um, making a statement to the town to the, the, the participators in our economy saying our pink journey starts here and let's all put our pink foot forward and that's the hashtag hashtag, hashtag pink foot forward FWD. and the journey will now go and involve us having a conversation with our uh, economic participants and once we have that that conversation going we're going to be able to position ourselves as a destination before we actually go to the market and say come here remembering that we are already speaking to the world this is a global conversation that we're having um, and there is an assumption that we, we are ready. So my opinion about marketing and destination marketing is there's a double, there's a double take. You are developing the destination to be ready for the market and to receive and be re receptive to this market and then you push your messages out and we're just so lucky that this event is happening and enabling us to do exactly that. The Pink Lurie is not a new event, it's been going for many years. Um, it seems to have undergone a bit of a revival, in fact a massive revival with the Mr. Gay World. And um, the town seems to be more pink than, it, than it's been in the last few years. There has been some, some um, resistance to the Pink Lurie. How do we go about addressing that resistance in the coming years? How do we ready the market, uh, ready the, the destination for the market? So the campaign our, our Pink Journey Starts Here is addressing exactly that. Uh, the fact that we only had one complaint this year is, is, in, it, is in itself a celebration. We, we need to now go out to the market and educate the market about the, the Pink Dollar. What do the Pink Dollar people want? What do we have to be? Are we, we are naturally a receptive market. Mm. We've got the first gay marriage taking place in Nasdaq. We've got the first adoptive um, d uh, dynamic. Uh, the people come from Nasdaq. Mm. We've got um, people living their lives integrated in our society um, who have um, got their own children, conceived their own children in, in, in quite a dynamic way mm. and choose not to speak about it. Mm. So I'm always amazed at how integrated we are. We are a very, very, very integrated community, the Gardner as a whole. Yeah, it, it's very important because um, it's, it's not so much about um, a, a, a gay market, a gay friendly market, as about a friendly market. Yes, uh, yes. And friendly and, to and, everybody. And if I take all the people that I know and that, that, that you know, I've, I've integrated into this community as well, and um, one of uh, one of our friends, a very 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 wealthy friend, uh, loves going to these trance parties and is a 
one of these um, hippie type. Mm. Um, and it's okay, so she's going to the trance party this weekend, and we get, I'm going to go and paddle, and someone else is going to go and do something else. Mm. And when we get together, we get together, and everyone is accepting of, of one another. And I think the fact that people whose choices are whatever they are integrate so well is because we are accepting. But th there's a difference between being accepting and going out into the world and say, saying we're an accepting market. You have to go and tell the market what you are. If we go and take something that's more understandable, cycling. If you're going to go and tell the cycling world, the mountain biking world, that we've got the best trails in the world, then you better have the best trails in the world. And that's where your comparative advantage comes in. People talk about competitive advantage and comparative advantage. There's a level of organic growth, which, which happens. But if you don't go and organize that and structure it just a little bit, you're not going to get that extra 12% out of the market. And at the end of the day, I'm at the business end. Regardless of what my position is, look at that market, convert it, and turn it into, into dollars. In, in, an, in, a non -inf in, an, in a way that is not offensive. That's very important. Now I'm going to put you on the spot. Tonight is the Mr. Gay. Is it tonight or tomorrow night? The Mr. Gay World. Tonight is Mr. Is the, the, the Masked Ball oh. and the Masquerade Ball, and then tomorrow, tomorrow is the second is the event. of May. Is the is the event? Your prediction for the winner this year? Well, I've I've had the pleasure of meeting each of the guys. I've shaken every one of their hands, and I've met Mr. South Africa on one of the television programs, the business television programs, and I met the Mr. World 2013. And I've learned that they're, it's a, they refer to it as delegates and it's not a pageant. These guys are put through them all. They, they, uh, yesterday I watched their art um, exhibition. They had to do art and they're being tested physically now and they have to speak. And watching Mr. Gay World 2013 from New Zealand, he is a well-rounded person. Um, and I learned a lot. I learned that in beauty pageants, the girls go out and say, I'm going to go and feed some kids some food, or they, they choose something. But these guys step immediately into a political world where there's just one thing, and that is acceptance, legislation, what is the legislation dynamic, who, the fact that there's legislation out there where countries um, do not, are not accepting within their legislation of uh, gay, gay dynamics. And what we have to realize in South Africa that we are so progressive in our, in our legislation and that, and that speaks to the social dynamic and the social dynamic then speaks to how we are as people interacting with one another. So let's get back to the predictions. Um, there are a lot of dynamic guys out there. Um, Mr. South Africa is growing by the day. He's obviously a favorite in terms of the fact that he's a local but he's up against massive competition. These chaps are focused. They find their way to you, they introduce you themselves to you, and they make sure you remember them. Mr. Hong Kong speaks exceptionally well, very strong communicator, uh, seems to be a well-rounded guy. Um, the all-black guy, the, the Kiwi, is um, a very unassuming chap. Um, you know, he just could be a regular, you wouldn't recognize him as a gay. Wicked sense of humor. I think he's got a naughty side to him and I think that he's sort of a, a dark horse type of chap One of those people that will probably be voted a second 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 by all the judges and come out in tops because he's not hated at all um, There are and then Just trying to think who else mr. Sweden made an impact on me um, in the in, in his way that he communicated these guys are incredible communicators they they really know how to make and put themselves across so, um, and it'll be, and Mr. Zambia, you can't, ex you know, he is, he's got a lot of depth. Um, he has got a story behind the story, a lot of depth, excellent communicator. And if you go onto his social media, you'll see that he reaches out and he's very active. So, um, if Mr. Zambia comes in as tops, I won't be surprised. Great, thank you very much. Thank you, Martin.